Hey Godot users, this is Wizard of Westmark with another Godot tutorial, this time talking about audio listeners and audio stream players. 2D and 3D both work pretty much the same, but this is when you want spatial audio where distance matters. At the, the basic level, you get closer to it, it gets louder, you get further away, it gets softer. But there's actually one really interesting thing I learned while figuring this out. Keep in mind, this is not going to be an in-depth tutorial because that would probably be hours long. This is get you inspired to try it out and play with it for yourself. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about the scene. We've got the regular size version of the icon. That's the player. We have the large one with an oversized collision shape that is just a static body for us to walk on. Wanted a lot of space to be able to show off the various things. And then the stream player has a very tiny version attached. This is not required. This is me making it more visible so in the video you can see where it is while we're moving around. Okay, let's start with the audio listener. Very straightforward. The two things that matter are its global position and this current. Current works exactly like camera. You can only have one at a time, and that's going to drive what you can hear the same way current on a camera drives what is displayed to the screen. And if you, if you, so, and once again, just like a camera, if you set something else to current, it will automatically disable whichever thing is set current now. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So you'll notice as we get close, it fades in and out. Okay, so now why don't we go over the actual audio stream player? All right, so let's talk about the audio stream player now. Stream is your audio file, Ogvorbis, MP3, Wave, etc. This is something I made in FL Studio a while back, and I figured it just worked for what I was trying to do. Volume DB, yeah, it's just in decibels. The volume, I would tend to never go over zero, and I would rarely tune it here at all unless it's just way too loud. I would use the audio bus, which we'll go into in more detail in a little bit. Pitch scales, pitching it up and down, and octaves. Um, playing is if you want to just play it right now. Um, we'll, sh we'll show more of that in a sec, but it's the equivalent of hitting play in game. Autoplay is if this node loads, start playing it. Pause is if you want to pause that instead of stopping and so that next time you play it restarts at the beginning. Max distance is the key to how this whole thing works and what the point is. So you'll notice it's, as I get closer to it, it plays, and as I get farther away, it gets quiet. Um, so now we'll play it again. I've put it to a lower number. And you'll notice I have to be much closer. So depending on how much you want the thing making the noise to surprise the player or what have you, tune that correctly. Attenuation, this is similar to the things I showed before in animation player. So it's driving the way it flows out. So like it, it's changing the how the flow is based on distance. Um, the default is linear. You can do ease in and ease out. I don't recommend ease in out and ease out in. When I did those, they actually caused really gnarly audio that I didn't want to subject you to. So I just re-recorded instead. Um, so now the last two things I'm going to cover is the bus. So this is telling it which bus to feed it through. We'll go into that in more detail in a sec, but it, it is useful to know. And this last thing is the area mask. This is frankly why I made this video. Okay, so the area 2D, that is this that I've been had floating off here to the side. You will notice it has a layer of two, and the area mask is also a two. So when this is audio has audio bus turned with override on, and you'll notice it's also using a bus. So when I put 
the audio player inside the scene in here in the area. Um, I'll go ahead and put it back to 400 so it's easier to hear. You will notice it, it sounds different because I put a reverb on it because of the bus it's on. So if you want to give area impacts, so like in a cave, you might change the way it sounds. This is a way to do that. Um, so with that, let's talk about buses in a little more detail. So here is the audio UI. It's, you click on the audio button. Normally you start with only master. I added the rev bus, which is just for reverb. Uh, you will see here, you can click on add effect. You can put the different ones in. And each one, when you click on them, will have its own set of settings that let you tune to your taste. This can be very useful. Um, and here's an important thing to remember is these all have to chain up to master sooner or later. And something um, here, I'm going to, I'm just going to show this to make a point. So you've got the SFX bus. So you will notice now it automatically put rev bus to SFX and then SFX has to go to master because these only go from right to left. So I could go directly to master if I wanted. And let me, let me show this here. So you will see the audio on this is pointing at SFX. And you can't hear anything because it's so quiet. Now, let's move it into the area and start playing it. And remember, I didn't change which bus this is pointing at, the audio stream player. But because the area is pointing at rev bus that doesn't go through the sound effects bus, it will not get the audio change. So if you've got sliders set up for the different types of audio, sound effects, dialogue, etc., make sure that you have a bus routing through each of those for anything that should be impacted by effects like this. So like I would have, say, rev bus SFX that goes to the SFX bus. And let's say I also had a uh, dialogue bus then so what would happen is I would route this one through SFX and then here I would make rev bus dialogue and this would go through the dialogue one this lets you control and guarantee that your audio works the way your players expect so please keep this in mind so that's the very basics on audio listeners and the positional audio stream players. Hopefully you found that useful and it gives you some ideas for how to add more interesting audio to your games than just playing it, you know, with the, the regular audio stream player that ignores position entirely. I know I use the 3D version in my game Shadow of Plato for the, the Pirate Jam because I wanted to be able to warn the player if an enemy was coming up behind them. And so it starts playing when they're within, I don't know, 50 meters. And also, like, the the enemy could spawn in right behind the player while they're hacking a terminal. And so it would actually pause the firing for, like, a second, second and a half, but the audio would play right away to give the player a chance to turn around and fight back before they got shot. Um, and things like that are really important. Hopefully, this will inspire you to dive into audio buses more, and especially, hopefully, it'll get you interested in messing with the area stuff to modify sound based on where the, where the sound is coming from, such as, oh, it's in a cave, so it should do reverb or whatever. Um, definitely look at the documentation. There's a whole lot in the world of audio buses. Hopefully this was useful to you. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, please post a comment below. And if I use it in a full-length tutorial, I'll give you credit. I hope you have a great day.